important for us. So one theme is the connection between the New and the Old Testament. Uh, and then um, another theme would be the theme of the koinonia, communion, because we are in the year of the Paris as communion. Another theme is uh, the theme of uh, compassion uh, because of the AJ case, <laughs> because of the death penalty, or uh, the compassion. And then the fourth is uh, the theme of the environment. So all of these themes are scriptural, so coming from the Bible. But um, I would like that uh, during this day, we will do something like this. I'll present to you the theme, and after presenting the theme, we can have some kind of discussion you know, about your experiences about the theme, and how we can bring this down more to our own people. So, to give the basic idea, biblical perspective about this theme, and then how this can be made more applicable to the people. Okay? So, I am using the PowerPoint presentation for all the themes. Uh, you may have a copy of the presentation, so you don't need to copy every slide. <laughs> no. uh, what is important is that you understand what the slide means, uh, because you can have the copy with yourself, with you. Okay? <laughs> so they are still having the connection to them. So anyway, I can start, and then uh, you just listen, and then imagine that you're seeing something here. <laughs> so the writings of the New Testament acknowledge that the Jewish scripture have a permanent value as divine revelation. When we speak about Jewish scripture, in our Christian parlance, we speak about the Old Testament. So the New Testament uh, tells us that the Old Testament has a permanent value as divine revelation. So the old, the New Testament does not do away with the new, with the Old Testament. So, um, the Jewish scripture or the Old Testament has permanent value, positive outlook towards them. So, the New Testament accepts them and regards them as foundation for the rest. So, the New Testament builds on the Old Testament. That's why the idea of some people, if we already have the new, why do we still need the old? Like you have now a new pair of shoes, why do you still use the old pair? No, as if the new takes over the old. No, that's not our view. That's why many people, some people, some scholars especially, don't call it old and new. Because of this idea that you have the new, you just take over the old. But they call it as the first covenant and the first covenant. Now the second covenant, the first testament, and the second testament. That's to show that there is a continuation. That's why the church has always held the Jewish scripture, or what we call the Old Testament, as part of the Christian Bible. 
In fact, our Bible is not just the New Testament. And many people are tempted to do away with the Jewish scripture or the Old Testament first because it is too long. Second is because they are not familiar with it. Most of us are familiar with the New Testament, especially with the Gospels only. Uh, and that's something that is uh, um, uh, uh, that's a great limitation for us if we just only knew the New Testament or only the Gospel. And thirdly, um, they, they tend to look down on the Old Testament because many sources of heresies and conflicts with the other religions, with the other Christian groups, is because of the Old, Te Old Testament. Kaya, it's better to do away with them. But for us, that's not true. No, it's an integral part of the Christian scripture. However, there is a threefold connection between the Old and the New Testament. And the threefold connection is um, there is continuity. So the New Testament continues the revelation of the Old Testament. But there is also discontinuity. So there are some things in the Old Testament that we no longer accept in the New Testament. So not everything there can be accepted now. And there is progression. No, that is um, that this is part of continuity. That is a building on. Somehow we transcend some aspects of the Old Testament no, in the New Testament. Okay, so these are the three a fold connection. So first, let's go to the continuity. <coughs> the New Testament fully appreciates the great themes of the theology of Israel in a threefold reference to the past, the present, and the future. So we don't do away with these concepts of the Old Testament in the New Testament. Concepts about the past, the present, and the future. In fact, it is a, there is a continuity in these ideas, like in the past. That concept in the past. Many themes are developed in the context of a particular history. Like uh, the history that God spoke. That God chose a people. God saved from historical events. The relationship of the covenant, the law as a way of faithfulness. So these are all presented in the past that God has been speaking with his people through Abraham, through Moses, through the prophets, through the wise men, that God chose a people. And as St. Paul tells us, what God has chosen, He does not reject. That's why the people of Israel continues to be a chosen people. At yan, we have to change also some ideas that we've said that now God has chosen the church. As because now we, do, we have the church as if the chosen people is now no longer a chosen people. No, they still are a chosen people. That's very clear in Romans. And even now, our popes have told us that, no? especially John Paul II, no? and Pope Benedict, and even Pope Francis, no? that uh, there's a special place for the people of God in the history of salvation for the people of Israel. And we have uh, connected that in our um, Good Friday liturgy, no? in those uh, prayers of uh, petition. One special petition is for the Jews separated from the one of the Muslims, separated from the rest of the other believers. No? And then God saved from historical events. <coughs> this is true of the Old Testament, that God works His salvation not in heaven, not in the spiritual sphere only, no, but also in our historical events. God continues to save by uh, taking them away from Egypt, by sending them into the exile, by bringing them back from the exile. So all these are historical events. God works in history. And that is true in the Old Testament. That's true even now. 
And then the relationship of the covenant of the covenant. There is a special relationship with the people because that relationship is covenantal. No, there is an obligation on the part of God. God obliged himself. God took upon himself to oblige himself to take care of the people. And the people also have their own part in that covenant. And then the law as a way of faithfulness. No, it's uh, what, what Baruch has said, what Jeremiah has said is true. That we are special because God has given us the law. We don't need to guess what God wants. God has told us how to worship Him. What attitude we should have. So uh, they saw the law not as an imposition, but the law as grace. No, that God has now shown us how we can love Him, how we can serve Him. So you don't have to guess. No, uh, yung mga magkasintahan, the first time they, they know each other, there's always a guessing, what food does He want? No, uh, uh, what time, uh, what kind of movie does uh, uh, this girl want? What kind of gift does, does she want or does he want? You have always to guess. No, but he do not need to guess what God wants. It's very clear. No, even in the worship, that's why the more detailed the worship, the, the regulations, the better it is for them. You don't have to guess no, what it is. So we, we may call it as legalism, but for them, that's grace. No? The present, relationship in the present, universal themes like God is one. That's true of the Old Testament. That's true even now that God is one. No? So in fact, um, there is the revelation of the Trinity because the, the ground is already clear that God is one. Then Jesus can add, that this one God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. If they had uh, uh, presented the Trinity without the foundation of the monotheism, easily could people think that God is a, the Father is a different God, the Son is a different God, the Holy Spirit is a different God. No, so the, the revelation of the Trinity, the foundation is that there is one God. Right? This one God is found the Son and Holy Spirit. So that's a universal theme. Another universal theme, God creates and sustains the universe. So, there is, of course, in the New Testament, we speak more about redemption. That God redeems us. Jesus redeems us. Now, although the theme of redemption is already found in the Old Testament, but we can speak about redemption because... There is creation. There is creation. That God is the source of all. And precisely there is a need of redemption because we have not been true to the plan of creation. No, we have not been true to the plan of creation. That's why there is a redemption. And because of this idea that God creates and sustains the universe, then Jesus could speak about the providence of God. That God can provide as He provides for the birds, as He provides for, uh, for, uh, for the flowers. So he, he can say that you can trust God because God sustains the universe. This is also the reason why Jesus can say, as the Father works, I work. No, yes, there is the Sabbath rest. But even if their God were rested on the Sabbath day, God continues to work in sustaining no, what He has created. So even on the Sabbath, He works. That's why I work. No, also give life on the Sabbath. So the firm basis of that is creation. No. Another uh, firm basis is human beings are great and noble despite their wretchedness. No. This is again the basis of redemption. That's why Jesus has come to look for the lost. Now, during this Sunday, we will have the Good Shepherd Sunday. And uh, Jesus is the Good Shepherd because He looked for the lost. That's why He's able to forgive 
Because there is a nobility in each human person. It's a uniqueness. We cannot lump them all together as drug addicts so wala ng pag-asa yan. No, as drug lords, so wala ng pag-asa yan. Each one is unique. But this basis of uh, the uniqueness, the nobility of each one, is based on the Old Testament concept of creation. That man has been created in the likeness of God. No, and precisely there is redemption because uh, we have to restore him to that likeness. No, so there is this uh, continuity between the two. No, so the New Testament concept of redemption is based on the Old Testament concept of uh, creation. The future <coughs> connection between the two. The promises of God which opens up to the future. So God is not only God who spoke, God who worked, but also is a God who promises. No. And we have so many promises of God in the Old Testament. But even in the New Testament, God continues to promise. So like the posterity of the faithful. No, the idea of posterity. There's a continue, a, a big grace, a human. That's why uh, uh, the, the promise of posterity to Abraham. You will you be a great people. As many as the stars of heaven. The sands on the seashore. So also in the New Testament, the idea of posterity. That's why you have to preach to all peoples. All peoples will be saved. <coughs> not only a few. God wants everyone to be saved. So the posterity of the faithful in the Old Testament, that faithful is more related to the race, is more related to blood. In the New Testament, that posterity is more related to faith. But even in the Old Testament, already Abraham is shown as the father of the faithful. Not only as the father of the Jews, but the father of those who believe. Survival in front of crisis and testing due to God's fidelity. So that's very clear in the Old Testament, you know, that God is faithful. So that's why, especially in the prophet Ezekiel, I will save you, not because you are good, but for my sake. For my sake, God continues to be faithful. So St. Peter can say, even if we are unfaithful, He continues to be faithful. So, the, uh, so our, the basis of our survival is not because of our goodness, no, but because of God's faithfulness, the fidelity of God. Okay? Establishment of the kingdom of God, Messianism. So the Old Testament promised this, that the kingdom of God would come. And this promise, could, although that promise has been fulfilled in Jesus, but still, the idea of missionism continues. The Messiah, Messiah has come, but the fullness of His coming, we are still expecting. That's why we have Advent, no, for the fullness of His coming. God's visitation, salvation, and punishment. God will visit His people. It's the day of the Lord, of Joel. No, the day of the Lord, of the prophet Zechariah. The day of the Lord is good news for those who are good. Because God will uh, reward. But the day of the Lord is bad news for those who are bad. Because God will promise. Now, God will come. Now, our attitude towards the coming of God depends on our relationship with Him. Now, and also, even now, there is the second coming, there is the parousia that will come, that we're expecting. That is good for people who are following Him, that is bad to take for those who take Him for granted. Okay? So that's the continuity. So you see, there's a very strong basis of continuity. However, there's also this continuity. So not everything that we find in the New Testament, uh, in the Old Testament, we hold on to now. You know? The Levitical priesthood of the Jerusalem temple. So even our priesthood now 
is different from the priesthood that we find in the Old Testament. That's why Jesus is priest as found in the book of Hebrews, not in the order of Aaron, but in the order of Melchizedek. But Jesus cannot be priest in the order of Aaron because the Aaronite priesthood is coming from Levi. And that's more a priesthood based on blood, raised on rains. But Jesus did not come from Levi, came from Judah. No? And uh, nobody from Judah became priest in the Old Testament. But if we claim that he is priest, his priesthood is from the order of Melchizedek. So because uh, there is now a new priesthood, then there is a new order. That's why there's a new sacrifice. That's why we don't continue the offerings of goats no, and sheep and cows. <coughs> Our offering is Jesus himself. And because there is a new priesthood, there is a new covenant. <coughs> sealed by blood, no longer by the blood of animals, but by the blood of the Son of God. So there's a very strong discontinuity here. No? Cultic forms like animal sacrifices. <coughs> so we've said that because there is a new priesthood, there's a new way of offering and what we offer. So it's no longer the offering of the animals. And this you can show very clearly for those who always go back to the Old Testament, like Jehovah's Witness, no, like the aggression in Cristo, the eating of blood, because it's found in the Bible. Yes, it's found in the Bible. Then why don't you offer goats? <laughs> then why, why, why don't you offer cows, as in the Old Testament? No. So, the potty form, just to show them that not everything there can be done now. Religious and ritual practices like circumcision, so we don't do circumcision as a religious ritual. Yes, in the culture of the Philippines, especially during summer, no, I doubt it's circumcision of the children, but that is more cultural rather than religious. There is no religious meaning, or that is just cultural, or some maybe have uh, reasons. But even in the Philippines, they don't see it as a health issue. They see it as a cultural issue. No, it's a rite of passage. Hindi ka na bata. No, matapang ka na. Nagpatuli ka na. Okay. Okay. The, but not only circumcision. There are also the rituals about uh, um, about the uh, liberate the marriages. The marriages of the in-laws. No, uh, religious practices like uh, the Sabbath, like the new moon, no, the offering of libations, the, about the cleanness and uncleanness no, that every uh, uh, human uh, <coughs> coming from man is unclean, like the blood, like menstruation, like the semen, they become unclean. So all of these practices, we don't follow that now. And then rules concerning purity and impurity. Again, we, we have seen this in the Old Testament. That's very strong. We, we see that in the food. There are pure and impure food. No. no. In the most, in the, among the Muslims, they call it the halal. Among the Jews, they call it as the... Yeah, the uh, Kosher. Kosher. As the kosher. No, so in the food, no, and still some make some groups, Christian groups, follow this uh, this idea. That's why they cannot uh, eat blood, they cannot eat uh, fish without scales, they cannot eat pork. No, still in the Old Testament. But also the idea of uh, purity and impurity is found in, in what you touch. You cannot touch the dead or else you will become impure. You cannot touch the semen. You cannot touch uh, uh, the menstruation, the fluids coming from the body. No. So that makes you impure. So, and uh, somehow this limits their own actions. Okay? 
dietary prescriptions you've said that no, what you can eat what you cannot eat na kosher no? and then imperfect laws such as divorce so yes there is divorce in the Old Testament that's the Deuteronomy 24 but Jesus has said already that what God has put together let not man put asunder and even in the Old Testament we already have such pronouncements as Malachi, I hate divorce, says the Lord. No. And also the, the law of revenge, imperfect laws. No, that you find, which still Pacquiao uses. <laughs> no, to prove that there is death penalty. No, in the Old Testament, yes, there is death penalty in the Old Testament. But that's Old Testament. That's not Jesus. Because sweet stick laws reflecting particular agrarian society or pastoral society. Casuistic laws that you cannot put together the linen and the cotton. No. You cannot uh, 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 yoke together the ox and then the, the donkey. No. So oh, there are these laws about, uh, um, about their particular way of life as agrarian people that you cannot put a kid in the milk of its mother. Uh, so that's uh, in a pastoral situation no, among shepherds. But that's not for us. No? This casuistic laws. And restrictive legal interpretations concerning the Sabbath and the feasts. What you can do in the Sabbath, what you cannot do, you cannot carry anything, you cannot put food at all. And Jesus was faulted here because they were he had to wash many things. No, you cannot even uh, uh, prepare food. You cannot even walk. You cannot carry anything. So during the Sabbath. So what is important to, to note is that the radical replacement in the New Testament was already adumbrated in the Old Testament. And so constitutes a potential legitimate meaning. So when Jesus said, I have come not to destroy, no, but to fulfill the Old Testament, what we have said no, about uh, what has been uh, uh, discontinued was not a sudden break. But already in the Old Testament, there were already voices against this. Like for example, about divorce. There was already a voices in the Old Testament that divorce is wrong. Now about vengeance, already in the Old Testament, God is presented as merciful. Now about the Sabbath, already is presented in the Old Testament that a time would come that even the foreigners can join in the worship. So there is already the shadow. All this not yet that clear. And this shadow has been more pronounced in the New Testament. No? So that, the, so that the, uh, there can be a change. No? So there is a potential meaning already in the Old Testament to take this out. Examples. Animal sacrifices. Psalm 50. Listen, my people. I will speak Israel. I will testify against you. God, your God am I. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you. Your burnt offerings are always before me. I will not take Balak from your house or he goats from your folds. For every animal of the forest is mine. Beasts by the thousands on my mountains. So already in the Old Testament, we are told that God is not that contented that because you offer animal sacrifice. In fact, all these animals are mine. I am not looking that from you. And in Psalm 50, we are told what God wants is that you obey His laws. You offer Him uh, offerings of thanksgiving rather than animal sacrifices. Okay, so there is the shadow. Although it's found only in some passages, but it's only there. No? I know every bird in the heights. 
whatever moves in the wild is mine. Were I hungry, I would not tell you. For mine is the world and all that fills it. Do I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goat, he goats? Offer praise as your sacrifice to God. Fulfill your vows to the Most High. Then call on me on the day of distress. I will rescue you and you shall honor. <clears throat> so God is not so much pleased by your animal sacrifice. God does not need the blood of the animals. What I'm asking for is fidelity. Uh, to your vows. To my laws. So already we have this uh, shadow no, about taking away the animal sacrifices. And in Jesus Christ, who is the definite revelation of God, we don't find Him offering in the temple. Yes, we find Him in the temple, but He was using the temple for teaching, but not for offering. Uh, the nearest that we have about the offering in the temple was the offering of Joseph and Mary uh, in uh, Luke chapter 2 for the birth of Jesus. But Jesus himself did not offer anything. Probably he also offered because he was a good Jew. Uh, but we don't find that stated in the New Testament. That means that it's not important. Uh, as a revelation in the New Testament. Another example is um, about divorce. So Malachi chapter 2 verse 16. This also you do. The altar of the Lord you cover with tears, weeping and groaning, because the Lord no longer takes note of your offering or accepts it favorably from your hand. And you say, why? Why does the way God does not take our own offering? Because the Lord it twists his witness between you and the wife of your youth. 